Hi everyone, so this video I will explain about chapter 6 for structural analysis which is influence line and then this is the part 1 for influence line okay we have point load, uniform distributed load and moving load influence line for these slides so let's uh, go to the introduction so previously the analysis of structures considered only load where the position will fix on the structure okay the, when the position is fixed so uh, we will just use the ordinary method okay however the structure generally are also subjected to loads such as life loads okay and which is means moving and also environmental loads those positions may be vary on the structures okay so consider the bridge okay let's see this figure Okay, so as a car moving across the bridge, the force in the member of truss will vary with the position X. So this car will move from A to the E. Okay? So the force of the member that will sustain the load, okay, the force that sustained by the member is also different, vary when the car moving. Okay. So the force in different truss member will become maximum at different position of the car. Okay. So the design of each member of the truss must be based on the maximum force that develop in the member as a car move across the bridge. Okay, so the each member okay will face their maximum at different points when the car is across. So therefore, the analysis of truss would involve for each member determining the position of the car at which the force in the member becomes the maximum, and then computing the value of the maximum member force. Okay, so the influence line here is used to analysis a structure subjected to variable loads. Okay, means the load is uh, not constant and then it is with it is uh, changeable. And initially introduced by this person, which is E. Winkler in 1867, and defined as a graph of a response. Okay, so we will have plot the influence line in the graph a response functions of a structure as functions of the position of a downward unit load moving across the structure means let's say this is a beam okay or simply supported beam so we will apply one let's say one kn unit load okay so so here it will move here is x okay so response functions are reactions okay reactions and then the v Okay, the shear and also the bending moment, the M, at sections of beam or force in a truss member. So in these videos, I will uh, focus on the beam, the calculation I will show you. So in the next video, we will go for another, uh, the tr truss structure and also the absolute maximum, minimum, uh, absolute maximum uh, shear force and so on. Okay, so this video, we are focused on this for this reaction, shear and bending moment. Okay. So if a structure is subjected to a live moving load, the variation of shear and bending moment is best described using described using the influence line. Okay. So the influence line basically is for the live and moving loads. Okay. And then as an influence line represents the variable variations of either the reactions, sh shear and moment at specific point. Okay, at specific point in a member as a concentrated force moving over the member concentrated force here means a point load okay the concentrated load so once this line is constructed one can tell at a glance where the moving load should be placed on the structure so that it creates the greatest influence at the specific point so the magnitude of the associate Third reactions, shear or moment at the point can be calculated based on the ordinates on the influence line. Here means that let's say we have a beam here. Okay. So you want to get the influence line at point at here. So you want to have a point at here. Okay. So you will have to construct an influence line. Okay. For this one. Okay. So you can calculate from the ordinates the point that you want okay so this is the point that let's say you want to get the magnitude for this so then you need to calculate for that so for this reason the influence line play an important role part in the design of bridges okay 
for bridges, industrial cranes, rails, conveyors, and other structures where lots moving across their spans. Okay. So the procedures of influence lines or for pin. Okay, how you do the analysis. So first, okay, we need to apply the unit load to move over the beam from the left, okay, from left to the right. So find the value of shear force of or bending moment at point under considerations of the as the unit load over the uh, the beam from the left to the right. So you need to find shear force and bending moment. But first, you need to have reaction first, okay, reaction. Where is the R A? Let's say R A R B, okay. And then you will have the V A, the V A, and the V, and then the V, the M, at the point, okay. So plot the values of the shear force bending moment over the length of the beam. Compute for the points under consideration. So after you found these equations for R, uh, the reactions, the shear force and bending moment, then you will have to plot it out, okay. So all these I will show you in few examples on how to do it over the point load, the UDL load, okay, and then the <coughs> okay. So influence the line, uh, influence line for reactions by equilibrium methods. Okay, we will use the equilibrium methods. Remember what is equilibrium equation? Total Fy equal to zero. Total moment equal to zero. Total Fx equal to zero. Okay, so here we will use this two basically. So construct the influence line for vertical reactions at A and B. So now you need to find the reactions influence line. Okay, when a moving load on this beam. When let's say you have a moving load one kilonewton here. So what is the reaction force? Okay. So let's see this example one. Okay, construct the inference line for vertical reaction at A and B. Okay, solution you need to apply one unit load. So here I apply one kilonewtons move over the beam from the left to the right. Okay, the the unit load will move from the left to the right. Okay, so some of you might ask, uh, can I move from the right to the left? Actually, if you want to do it, you can do it. But we are used to from the left to the right. Okay, so for me, I'm not familiar with from the right to the left because I used to from the left to the right also. So we just stick with it, then easier. Okay, so you can see that when we apply a unit load 1 kN x distance from A, okay, this is 5, uh, five meter, so this is 5 minus x. Okay, so total Fy equal to 0. Okay, you can also use total Fy going upward equal to total Fy moving downward. This one is the same because when total Fy equal to 0, Fy outward plus Fy downward equal to 0. You just move this to here. Other same things. Uh, in the example, some of the example they are using these equations. This equation and this equation basically are the same. Same thing. Okay. So I will not repeat much here because this is like the basic that supposedly you already have. So Ra and Rb. Okay. Ra plus Rb. Minus 1 equal to 0. So Ra equal to R, uh, 1 minus Rb. But then here you, we haven't have the Rb yet. So what you have to do is you need to find the uh, using the equilibrium equation of total ma equal to 0. When total ma equal to 0, 1 minus 1 times x, the distance, okay, the positive, okay, minus Rb times 5, the distance, equal to 0. So after you sort it, Rb equal to x over 5. Okay, and then Ra equal to 1 minus x over 5. Okay, so here actually, actually you can see that the equations are for this. Okay, Ra is equal to 1 minus x over L. Okay, L is the length of the beam. And Rb is actually x over the L. Okay, so if you want to fasten it up, you can be using this directly for this ah, okay for this not for the overhanging beam and so on okay so for this simply supported one if you are facing simply supported later more example you will see that it is basically these two equations okay so let me clean this okay let me keep 
clean this. This is too messy. Okay, so after you calculate RA and RB, okay, then you can start to plot the influence line. But what you how to do is, okay, you can make a table, a simple one. You put the X, okay, which is the, the, the length, and then you put RA and RB. So you have 0 to 5. So you can put 0, you, if you want to be faster, you can put only 0 to 5, and 0 and 5. If you want to see how this progress, okay, if you still not used to the shape of the inference line, you can put 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you calculate using this equation for RA, this equation for RB, you will get this value. Okay, so inference line for RA, okay, when one unit load applied, okay, so it will be 1.0. 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 to 0. Okay, so this is like A to B, the distance. Okay, when X is equal to 5. So when X is equal to 5, RA will be 0 because the load will be supported by RB. When the load is applied at RA, okay, you will put 1.0. 1 here is, okay, let's say 1.0 here is it will take 100% from the force. Okay, you will take 100%, 1.0, okay. So let's say you have uh, 5 kN applied on this, okay, applied at, let's say you have this, okay, let's say you have uh, 5 kN, you apply at, let's say 2, okay. So RAA will be 1 minus uh, 2 over 5, then you will get 0 0.6. Okay, so equal to 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 times 5, you will get 3 kilo newton. So when the when the load applied is 5 kilo newton, you will get Ra equal to 3 kilo newton, and Rb equal to 0 0.4 times 5, you will get 2 kilo newton. Okay, so this is the meaning of inference line when you check. Okay, Rb here when you plot okay when it is zero mean that uh, the load is applied on top of it then it will take all the forces when it is applied at a here means that rb will be zero when the load is applied five kilo i uh, five meter from the support b okay so this is the usage of influence line okay okay so next we go for the influence line for shear and moment by equilibrium equations equilibrium equilibrium method sorry okay. so this is an example don't construct the influence line for ra rb vc and mc now we want to find the shear okay the v and the m at this point okay so at this point and then it already give the distance here is two meter here is six meter so when a lot apply so what is the V and the MC at uh, VC and MC at here? Okay. So what we have to do is the first step we need to apply one kilonewton, which is the here. This is the first step. Okay. So let me remove this. So when we apply one kilonewton here, okay, then we will first step we need to find the reaction force. Okay, this is the first step. So R B and R A. So as I said, RB will be X over L. Okay, you can see that L is X, so it's X over L. Okay, if you want to have answer, and then this is 1 minus X over L. L is X. So you get RA and RB. Okay, you're using this equation, total MA equal to 0, you will get RB. Total FY equal to 0, then you'll get RA. Okay, and then you make the equation uh, inference line like the uh, previous example. So RA is 1 to 0 like this, RB is 1 to 0 like this when uh, you need load moving on it. After we construct the inference line for the reaction force, so now we need to construct the inference line for the VC and MC. Okay, so how you do it is, now we need to cut it to two sections, okay, for the beam. Okay, so this is the A, B. So we cut at C. So we cut it at C, it will become VC here, okay and VC here okay going upward and this one is counterclockwise this is clockwise for the MC here 
and because this is in equilibrium so remember what you have to do so here the, the total b is, is zero total m will be also zero okay because we catch it but it's there in the equilibrium okay so the brain will separate it to two segments so when we calculate zero to x to two so for the first segment here okay so for the first segment here we apply the one kilonewton in between two meter okay so the load is moving from the left to the right so when it is at the left section so okay so here is total is two meter so here is x and this distance is two minus x okay so it will going to be bigger the value of x when it's moving to the right so you generate the equation of total fy equal to zero you will get okay vc equal to negative x over eight and then you to, you using the equation of total mc equal to zero then you will get mc equal to 3x over 4 so after you get these two equations you make a table you put 0 and 2 for the x you put in the value for the v you put the value for vc and mc into the equation you will get this two value okay and then you make the now you need to calculate for the x in between two x uh, in between 2 and 8 meter so what you have to do it now is the load is already moved to the right side okay so now the load is at this side okay so uh, here we know that vc at left and vc and the right okay it should be the same because it is in the equilibrium so now you have a b at here okay this is rb you have a 1 kilo newton here Right here is the here is the VC and MC. Okay, but then we are not using this section because it will be more complicated. So what we can do is we can use the left sections before because after you calculate it will give you the same equation uh, same same results. Okay, so you use this equation. You see that here is no force applied. Okay, only reaction force and the VC. So it will ease the calculations. So after you calculate the total Fy equal to 0, you will get Vc equal to 1 minus x over 8. And then the Mc equal to 2 minus x over 4. So you put in the value from 2, 8 into the Vc and Mc, you will get 0, 0.75 and 0, 1.5 and 0. So once you have all this value, you can generate the inference line. Okay. So you plot the value for Vc and Mc. So you will get that when you have a 1 kN okay, load applied at this point C. So you will have an inference line for the shear like this. You will start with the negative shear and then you have a positive shear 0 0.75. And then you will have a maximum bending bomber 1.5. Okay, in this, like this. So the note says, okay, you can see that the inference line for moment resemble in shapes to the bending moment diagram it looks like the bending moment diagram but then the inference line for bending moments is entirely different huh? this is different meaning than the bending moment diagram a bending moment diagram shows how the bending variables at all sections along the length for a loading conditions okay which is fixed on the member but the inference line for bending moment show how the bending moment varies okay at one particular section as a unit load across move along the beam. So this Muller Breslau principles, okay, developed by Heinrich Muller Breslau in 1886, okay, it shows this stated that the inference line for a response function, which is including the reactions, shear and moment, is given by the deflected shapes of the release structure obtained by removing the restraint corresponding to the response function from the original structure by giving the release structure a unit displacement okay or either rotations okay at the location in the directions of the response function so that only the response functions and the unit load perform the external work so in order to draw the deflected shapes properly so the capacity of the beam okay the capacity of the beam must be removed 
so that the beam can deflect when the function is applied so later we can see it okay to be have more clear imagination of it so the shape of the inference line for vertical reaction f a is to be determined the beam is first replaced by a roller guide so the beam okay so the beam so if you have a pin section or what it will become a roller well when the positive outward force is applied at a so the beam deflect to the dashes point C, where it represent the general shape of the inference line for AY. So we can see at the example. So this is A and B for simply supported. So when you remove this to a roller support, okay, from here, let's say now you remove to a roller support, and then it is supported only from from this side. Okay, so that when you have a roller here, okay, you support at here. You support from here but here you have no support to here and then you apply a lot from here you push it upward so imagine that when you have a beam like this you push you push and then it will move to here so the beam will relocate the deflect the shape will be like here that's why when you plot the inference line for ay it will become like this based on the deflected shape okay so if the shape of the inference line for the shields uh, at C is be determined at A, so the connections at C might be symbolized as a roller guide. So apply a positive shear force VC to the beam at C, allow the beam to deflect to the dash point where the inference C will be established. Okay, so you can see that when you have a point C. Okay, so at here you change it to a roller. Here you have a roller. When you change it to a roller here, so you can apply a VC going downward at this side and VC going upward at this side. Okay, you put here. So when you press push from this side, so the beam will deflect toward here. When you push a force on this side, okay. So here now it's basically like become two sections when you apply a roller. So this is by single one. So this is a beam like this. So when you push upward, so this beam will become like this. So when you press downward at this section, the beam will become like this. So when you plot it, okay, it will become like this. So this is the sections for it okay when you cut so this is the point a b c okay and then if the shape of the inference line of the moment at c is to be determined at the internal pin or hinge at c so apply the positive mc to the beam and then the beam will deflect to the dash point where the shape the inference line c so let's see that so let's say this and uh, the c you apply a hinge on it Okay, means that here you will have a moment. So the moment here, okay, counterclockwise and clockwise. So when you move it this way, this section, you become two sections of beam. You move it, so this beam will going to deflect this way. So that's why you eh, move it down here. So this is the deflected shape. This is a support here. This is the support here. Okay, so here you will move in this way. So the deflected shape is the inference line of it. So this is another example when you have the pin at A, then you apply with roller. So it will move going this way. That's why the inference line will be like this. So this is the overhanging beam. So at here, support here, you will have a negative AY here. And this one you have a positive here based on the deflected shape. So continue. So when you have a cantilever beam, you, uh, you move it to become the two roller support here. Okay, where it will not resist the AY already. You will resist this direction and the moment. But then when you push it onward, okay, it will become moved to this shape. That's why the inference line is like this. Okay, so again, a roller gate is, guide is applied at point A. So this one, you apply a roller to become like this. Okay, so when you push here the lot, okay, so the beam will move toward this here. And here is a hinge. Okay, so when you push <coughs> the force here, okay, it will become this way. Okay, the hinge will become like this. So it will become inference line like this. Okay, so now the point B, you change to pin and the roller. So what, when you push a force from here, going downward, so this one will moving downward. However, here, the support A, okay, will come constrain the beam from moving vertically because the support is from this section so this beam will not move that's why the inference line is only at this 
Okay, so point V when you apply it here because here is fixed support, so here you have no def deflected shape, and then this one will deflect like this. Okay, so another example when P you move, so here when you apply a V V going upward, it will go upward, and this section it will move downward, and because you have a hinge here, so it will move like this. So when you apply the moment at B, you will have an influence like here because here you are already being constrained, so here you have no deflected shapes. Okay, so another section B here for a cantilever, uh, cantilever wind at fix. So you apply a moment here. So the bending moment here, here you will have no wind, no if, uh, deflected shape. So the bending moment was only like this. Okay, so this is another example. So the muller breslau principle is a diagram shows the general shapes, okay, without any numerical value. No value is only qualitative, only shows the shapes, okay. But then the uh, inference line with the numerical values, okay, where is the previous example that you see that we can calculate it actually. So that is quantitative. We quantify the values of it, okay. So the applications. What is the application for inference line? After you generate the application, uh, the generate the inference line, it can use to apply on the point load, okay, UDL, and also moving load. So first we look at the point load first. So inference line represent the variations of functions, either the reactions, shields, or moments at specific point due to the unit load. So once the line is constructed, one can tell where the moving load should be placed on the structure. So when the concentrated load, the magnitude of the associate reaction shear or moment at the point can be calculated by multiply, okay, the load and the ordinates. Okay, so of point load is only calculate the load when the ordinates only. When the UDL is calculated with the area, but for point load is at the ordinate only. Okay, so let's look at the example on this one. So the simply supported beam as shown in the figure have a length of 50 meter and the point load of 105 kN is moving from A to B. So here it asks you to calculate the maximum positive shear and then the negative shear that develop at point X. Okay, so maximum moment at X is how much? So here you need to have a cut section, cut, uh, you need load 1 kN applied here and then you generate the inference line for the uh, V and the M then you calculate by substitute the value of 105 times the ordinate or the value then you will get it. So let's go for the solution of it. Okay, so what you have to do is again you need to get the reaction force. So reaction force as I said before you can use the equations of 1 minus x over the length, the distance, and the x over the distance for the RB. Okay, so here also I show you the uh, ordinary method from this. When you calculate, you will get this. Okay, and then after you get the RA and RB, you can uh, calculate the V and the shear and the moment. So when the x is cut at 6, so you need to break it to two sections where first is x in between 0 to 6 and the second one is x in between uh, 6 to six to 15. So for the first section you cut it then here okay you apply 1 kN at the left side you generate it generate the equation you will get vx equal to negative x over 15 and mx equal to 3x over 5 and then you will get this value for this okay. So I will show you the next calculation. So when the value is when the x is in between six and fifteen, so the load is now is already at the right side. Okay, so if you put this at the right side, it will be R B and then this is one kilo newton. Okay, and then this is uh, M C and this is B C. So if you want to, some of you might be curious, can we use this right side to calculate? Yes, you can, but it is a little bit, uh, not. we are not used to it. So for me, I personally, I still stick with the uh, left to the right. I like this side instead of this. And you can see that here, when you get it, actually the VC here and the MC here, X, sorry, okay? The X and the V here, MX and VX here will be the same as here, okay? I used to say C, sorry, so it's this X. 
Okay, so this one will be the same, so you can use this side. Okay, so when you calculate, you will get Vx equation and Nx equation. So now you substitute the value of 0 to 6 using the first part and 6 to 5 using the second part. You get all this value. You can plot the graph like just now the page before. Okay, I plot it here again 0 0.4 negative and 0 0.6 for the V. And for the M, you will get 6.3. Okay, so you have this two. So the first, the A will ask you to calculate the maximum shear, positive shear. So positive, you apply the positive. And then the maximum for this is 0 0.6. So you get 105 times 0 0.6, you get the value 63. And second is maximum negative shear. So this is the maximum negative shear is 0 0.4. So 105 times 0 0.4 is negative 42 kilonewton. And then the third one is maximum moment. So from this, we can see that maximum is 3.6. So 3.6 is the ordinates. And then you 105 times the load times 3.6, you get 378 kN. So these are the application of it. You can get the maximum value from the inference line. Okay. So how about the UDL, the uniform distributed load? So the value of the function caused by a uniform distributed load can be determined by multiplying the UDL and the area. For point load is the time ordinates. For UDL is time area. Okay, so when you have a PQ 10 kN and then it's 2 meter, apply 3 meter from A. So it means that you have a 5 meter here, you have a 3 meter from here. So you have a lot 10 kN per meter. Okay, here is 3. It is 2. You have a UDL at here. So you need to determine the bending moment. You want to have the moment here. So that's the step. So let we go through. So again, first you need to get the reaction force. Okay, then uh, X is at point 0.5 here. Then you generate, you break the beam into two sections, which is the X in between 5 and 0 to 5 and X between 5 to X. And then again, you calculate with you, these two graphs, you will get the mx equal to 3x over 8 for the first part. And then mx equal to 5 minus 5x over 8 for this second part. Then you put your value into it, you will get this two value. And you plot, you will get this. Okay, so as I said, UDL must time area, right, to get the moment. So let's go for it. So you can see that this is the moment for it. Okay, 1.875 and 1.125. So how you get this? This is 5, this is 3. Okay, so remember how to get it in the previous slide array. So you want over 5 over 5 equal to y over 3. Okay, so by using this, okay, you can get y equal to 1, 1, 2, 5. You solve it, huh? time, okay. So you will get this value. And then the bending moment for this one is actually trapezoidal straps. Okay, trapezium. So you know the area of trapezium if you plot like this, A, B times the height. Okay, so the area actually is A plus B times the height. Okay, over 2. So that's why the equation for the bending moment is over half times the height. This is the A, this is the B, and then this is the load. Okay, so you get 30 kN meter when you have a UDL applied at this 3 meter from A. So, after the point load and UDL load, so now we have another load is moving load. So, in design the structure, the position of the maximum shear force and maximum bending should be determined. We need to use the maximum load for the design. In order, the, in order for the structure to be able to sustain that maximum load. Okay, if a structure is not able to sustain the maximum load, then it says defeat the purpose for design because it will fail before the maximum load. So make sure you get the real maximum load. So if the structure undergoes one or two moving loads, okay, the position of the maximum shear and bending moment can be determined easily from the inference line. So this is the example. Okay, the last example for this video. So determine the maximum moment at point X when the two loads apply. So normally, now you can see that we have a point X from 4 meter from this beam 16.5. So first, as usual, you need to get the inference line for the reaction force, for the V and for the, uh, the bending moment. Okay, 
So you construct as usual. And then you apply these two lots only. Okay. So let's look at the solutions. So as usual, you need to get RA and RB. After you get this, you break it to two parts. So first part is in between the 0 to 4. Second part is in between 4 to 16.5. And then in between 0 to 4, you use this one to calculate. You will get the MX for this. And for this one, you will get the MX for this. Okay, you put into the table for the value, then you plot, you will get these shapes, okay, for the moment. For, for this, I only calculate the moment because the question is asked for the moment. If also asked for the shear, then you need to calculate for the shear, okay. So for this case, because you have two loads, so normally you also want to get the maximum load, the point load will be at the point X. So here we have two point loads, means there you have two cases where the first case, the 15 kN will reach at the point X first. Okay, so for this case, we can see that here you have a 15 kN and then here you have a 10 kN and then the gap is 2.5 meter, means here is 4, here is 1.5. Okay, so to get the value of here, the ordinates here, you need to use this, okay, uh, 3.03 .03 over 4 equal to 1 over 1.5 so you get 1 equal to 1.14 because now we are using this area for this triangular so after the main and most maximum equal to 1.15 times the ordinates okay the point lot plus 3.03 .03 times 15 then you get 56.85 and then the second case now we go to the second case so now the load okay the load is moving to the right so 10 kN is at the X and 15 kN is at the right side of it. Okay, so here is from the left, here is 4. But from the right, here is 12.5. Okay, which is here. So here is the gap is 2.5 means here is 10. Okay, here is 10, here is 2.5. So at this point where we want to get this value, we need to use the triangular for this one. We need to use this one. So when we do this one, 3.03 .03 is over 1.25 equal to y over 10. So when you solve it, you will get y equal to 2.42. So you get 3.03, 2.42, then you calculate 10 times 3.03 plus 15 times 2.42, you'll get the maximum load is 66.6. .6. So by compare the case 1 and case 2, you will get higher maximum at the moment is 66.6. .6. So that the maximum bending here is 66.6. .6. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. So for the next video, I will explain about the absolute maximum moment and show and also the inference line for the trust. So thank you for watching.